Holy smokers, folks, what a week that was. That was no joke. Was, oh my gosh. Here we have a uh, stock getting absolutely obliterated. A lot to get into here today. We got to talk about Palantir. Palantir was my worst stock here today. We got to talk about Tesla Maestro. Like, are we crazy in the mind or is this like the greatest deal ever? Like, what is going on? The solar stocks are getting absolutely wrecked. Solar Edge crashed. Um, end phase crashed, right? This is a three month for these these stocks, right? Uh, Tesla's down 22% in the past three months. PayPal's down 28% in the past three months. Enphase is down 44% in the past three months, and Solar Edge is down almost 70% in the past three months, folks. And uh, yeah, today was ugly. PayPal, or this was actually just the past five days. PayPal down about 5%. Palantir down 6.5%. Tesla down 16.3% in the past five trading days. Enphase down 20%, and Solar Edge down 31% in the past five trading days. So we're going to talk about those stocks. Tesla. What do I think this stock's going to bottom at? Do I think it's bottoming soon? Okay. So. I, if, you know, I think Tesla probably short-term bottoms Monday, Tuesday. That would be my guess in regards to this. There's usually a three-day rule in the market, right? Which is essentially a thought process around after a stock, it's a huge flush down after their earnings. You usually bottoms about three to four days later, okay? And so naturally, the stock should bottom Monday, Tuesday, and then you can start to have some buying pressure. Especially, we should climb back at end of the week if... Meta comes in, reports great earnings. Amazon comes in, reports great earnings, because that's obviously going to push the Qs. That would push the S&P 500. Both the Qs and the S&P 500 matter to Tesla. That could push ETFs. That could push a bunch of things, and it would all benefit Tesla. And so you could end up in a very nice end-of-week rally, if not end-of-month rally for a good old Tesla Maslow. But ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla does go down in November and December. We have the Cybertruck event at the end of November. I don't think that's going to bring necessarily any extra excitement. Everybody knows Cybertruck's coming. We're, we're all excited for it. It's, I don't think that adds anything extra that like everybody's going to jump to the moon for. So my opinion is Tesla's true bottom. Worst case scenario, probably 140, I see. Best case scenario, probably 190, um, you know, for the end of this year. We'll see how it all shakes out. Obviously, a lot is going to have to do with how the market trades in general, the NASDAQ, the Qs especially, and the S&P 500. Now, Palantir was my worst stock actually today. My worst stock. 5.5% down for Palantir. It got hit you know, pretty hard this week in general, right? Uh, by the way, Avant, just sad. Sad. I mean, they reported such a good quarter and just no one cares. No one freaking cares about a 12 cent stock. That one's a little sad to kind of see the performance because I'm like, man, they're really like putting up great numbers and just like no one cares right now. It, but it is what it is. It's the market we're dealing with, right? But in regards to Palantir, I'm extremely confident. I mean, Palantir and Fubo are probably the two companies I'm looking the most forward to getting into, to see their earnings. Meta and Amazon definitely looking very forward to it, but freaking Palantir. I cannot wait for the Palantir conference call. I cannot wait to live stream that baby on Twitch when we do that. Uh, man, and I can't wait for Fubo's subscriber numbers. Oh my gosh. Ooh, and I can't wait for Fubo's guidance as well. Looking really, really flipping flapjack and uh ready for that one. So overall, going into this earnings week, I'm much more confident than I was this past week. Let's put it that way, folks. And uh, overall, my batteries are very charged up right now. Very charged up. By the end of this earnings season, I'm going to be out of power because it's a lot to go through and it's so many conference calls to listen to, so many income statements to get into and balance sheets and all that stuff. But for right now, my batteries full charge. And you look at Tesla stock here today, right? And we're going to talk in depth about Tesla and Elon Musk and that whole situation a little later on. But I just wanted to illustrate the, to your guys' attention. Do you know what Tesla stock price hit this morning? Do you know what it hit this morning? If you were up early this morning, you know what Tesla stock hit. If you don't, you might not. Tesla stock hit $202 within the first several minutes of trading, essentially. I mean, it is a possibility that if Bill Ackman does not send that tweet... It is a realistic possibility that Tesla could have touched under $200 a share here today. It could have been $199, $198, something like that today. Being that it opened, you know, at 202 or, you know, shortly after the open, it was 202. Like, my gosh, right? But what a shift. So here's what's going on now at this point in time. Okay, this is getting serious. Tesla says the Justice Department is expanding investigations into issuing and issuing subpoenas for information. Federal prosecutors have expanded investigations into Tesla beyond the electric vehicle maker's partially automated driving systems, and they have now issued subpoenas for information instead of simply requesting it, the company disclosed on Monday. Okay, a subpoena is a much more serious 
serious legal matter when it comes to the government. When they start, you know, because the government can ask for information, things like that. A subpoena is a whole different situation, okay? That's like the most serious kind of situation uh, that you could kind of face as an actual subpoena, okay? Federal prosecutors have expanded investigations into Tesla beyond the electric vehicle makers partially automated driving systems, and they have issued subpoenas for information instead of simply requesting it. The company disclosed on Monday. In a quarterly report filed with Securities and Exchange Commission, Tesla said the Department of Justice is looking into, you know, and subpoenas usually have to go through the court system, okay? Tesla said the Department of Justice is looking into, quote, personal benefits, related parties, vehicle range, and other personal decisions without giving details. That sounds like a whole lot of a lot there, okay? There's a lot of subpoenas on a lot. That's all I'm going to say to you, okay? Ask any lawyer, that's a lot of subpoenas on a lot there. Okay. The additional investigation topics in the subpoenas suggest that prosecutors have broadened their inquiry and they have found the need to force Tesla to disclose information, legal experts say. The filing indicates prosec prosecutors may be investigating Tesla CEO Elon Musk and whether the company has been candid in describing the features of its vehicles, they say, right? Which could go into, um, Let's say Tesla said this car gets a range of 250, and let's say the car only gets a range of 200 miles or 175 or different numbers, okay? Oh, gosh, um, you know, that's a whole situation. You've got to think, oh, man, what could that do to Tesla? Like, let's, let's say Tesla was found that they were fudging. Let's just say hypothetically. Let's say they say they were found that they were fudging the amount of miles a car could go, right? Instead, 250 is really only 175. Let's just say that. What does that mean for Tesla overall? Well, this could be a very serious matter. One is that could mean fines and all those sorts of things. Two, they, the, if the government found stuff there, if they actually found stuff and they could prove it, they could actually force the company to maybe do recalls, to maybe issue new vehicles, new batteries, I, all types of crazy stuff, okay? Which would be ridiculously costly. If any of these subpoenas come out to they found something and they could prove it and, and things like that, okay? And so just... Keep in the back of your mind, this is one of those scary things of like, wow, this could cost a fortune if, if anything actually happened there, right? Now, Jacob Franco, a former SEC enforcement attorney and ex-federal prosecutor, said specifically pointing out, quote, personal benefits in related parties, end quote, suggest a possible connection to Musk. Disclosing the vehicle ranges under scrutiny also reflects a concern about the company's representation on about vehicle uh, features, which is very interesting, right? So, yeah, the, it likely it sounds like they're going more wide range, okay, in regards to going after Musk, in regards to going after Tesla and, and the cash cow that is Tesla, right? Now, the good news is we are talking about Elon Musk is the uh, richest person in the world, okay? And so likely he should have the best law firms, the best law firms, and the best lawyers out there, and he should have those for Tesla as well. So... If there is any sort of situations, the legal team at Tesla should be a higher level than what the government has. Should be. It's not a promise or it's not a guarantee, but it, they should be, okay? So I think it's going to be a tough legal battle, but it is scary. There's no doubt about it. It's scary when you, when you hear some of the things they're looking into there. And I don't know, man. It, it's, it's a... It is something to definitely be concerned with and definitely think about, okay? Definitely think about. So this kind of gets into, right, this whole short-term crap time we are in in regards to Tesla stock, right? Which Tesla stock's down about 16.5% just in the past five trading days, which is a huge number in five trading days. The government's after Tesla now. And once again, they're not really out after Tesla to be after Tesla, in my opinion. They're really after Elon Musk. But how you get to Elon Musk is you go through Tesla, so that's just my opinion on that. I don't know, okay? All that matters is government's after Tesla, okay? The margins are still likely two to four quarters away from bottoming. I feel like we're probably about two quarters away from mar uh, margins bottoming. I think we've probably got another rough one this quarter, another rough one the following quarter. I think 2Q, we could actually see a margin pickup or at the latest Q3, but a lot of people aren't convinced we're going to see a margin pickup till like Q4 of next year, if not 2025, Okay. A lot of people have very wide-ranging opinions, but the bottom line is margins haven't bottomed yet, likely, and they're still too bottom, okay? The third thing is the very important thing that Elon Musk said on that conference call, okay? And Elon Musk basically illustrated us that Cybertruck hell is, is about to be here, okay? Where they're going to ramp this vehicle, 
and they're going to have a lot of problems, and they're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations and a lot of situations in regards to Cybertruck, right, which is could also weigh on margins and profitability of the company in a major way, as well as management's attention and time, right? So that's coming here, right? And also, we're dealing with interest rates of the, basically the highest we've seen in a couple decades now at this point in time, right? So when you've got all that to deal with, basically the, the kitchen sink is being thrown at us in the short term. I'll just be honest. When you've got all that crap, this is all serious, serious stuff to deal with. I mean, very serious stuff. Highest interest rates in 20 years. You've got this ramp of a brand new, fundamentally different vehicle. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be not smooth for the next several months, if not several quarters. You've got margins that still haven't bottomed and they've just been, you know, plummeting down. You have the government after this company. It's a kitchen sink being thrown at Tesla right now. A kitchen flip and flapjack and sink, right? And so that's what we're dealing with in the short term. And that's what's going to continue to weigh on the stock in the short term, right? Things are pretty promising for Tesla over the long term. And I think as 2024 goes along, I do believe that these negatives are going to slowly start to abate and slowly start to be kind of shredded apart one by one as 2024 rolls along. But it's a process to work through. And the bottom line is, you know, we're... We're just not done yet. We're, we're, you know, a lot of those are going to be ongoing issues in 2024 and they're not going away. Okay. Alrighty, guys, let's get into this. Takedown. We are battling over the future of Tesla and the EV explosion are bare. The one and only fit and fighting trim, Dan mm. Nathan, yeah. well, future fund managing partner, Gary Black, who joins us uh, on the fast line tonight. We had some technical issues with his picture. Gary, you'll get the first swing here. You still like the stock here. You know, a lot of people were commenting on the, on the conference call that Elon sounded really down and out. Um, he blamed everything under the stun, sun, higher interest rates. By the way, if you don't know Dan Nathan, he's always insanely bearish on tesla every time i've ever heard him talk about tesla over the years always comes across as super bearish always comes across like he has a personal vendetta against elon musk as well so just do keep that in mind in regards to this video here today Bad macro environment geopolitical uh but this is still your second largest position yeah look the conference call was was lousy the earnings uh was were lousy because they missed on the most important metric, which is auto gross margin. Uh, and the, col- the quality of the earnings were light because it was all based on rate credits and lower tax rate. But when you think about the stock, it's trading now 52 times. It's growing its volumes and earnings at 35% between now and 2027. I, I'm a growth manager. I can't find stocks that traded 52 times that are growing at 30 to 35%. So we still like it. Uh, in terms of volumes, you had noted on Twitter, Gary, that past price cuts didn't yield an increase in volume. And there's concern now that Tesla will, will continue cutting price in order to compensate for higher rates, which would hit the consumer in the form of the auto loan, auto financing. So, you know, to what end do they do they cut price at this point if, if you say that the incremental volume is just not not materializing? You know, there's been no demand elasticity, despite what Elon says. You know, if you look at where the estimates for 2023 were at the beginning of the year, and then you look at where they are today, they're exactly the same. If you go out to 2024, they're actually lower. So you're not getting any volume growth for these price cuts. So we've been advocating stop cutting price, put some money into advertising, use that as another tool in your marketing toolkit to try to get more volume because I don't I don't think by cutting the price of the Model Y from fifty thousand to forty eight thousand is going to get you any more incremental volume, and and I'll go so far as to say that if you look at monthly payments of a uh, so let me push back against that for a moment here I, I I do believe what Elon's doing is is genius uh, my personal opinion I have a, maybe a little bit of a different view and and obviously if you're talking about for short term numbers it's absolutely the wrong decision to make right. Uh, It destroys profitability, destroys margins. But I do actually believe he has made the right decision. And the the reason I believe he's made the right decision is now, for the first time in Tesla's history, Tesla's seen as the affordable vehicle for the middle class between Model 3 and Model Y. It's never been like that. But because of all the price cuts they've done, and then if you add on the tax credits on top of that, now Tesla is seen as the affordable vehicle to the masses. That's a huge game changer. Now it takes a while to like get that into everybody's brain and everybody realize, oh, Tesla is making affordable vehicles. There's kind of a lag time there. You know, we talk about the Fed lags, right? There's a there's a lag time before it gets to consumers and everybody starts to recognize, oh my gosh, Tesla's the the affordable vehicle for the masses. When you break it down on the math, just math, 
And never mind the quality of product you get for the price points they're at now at this point in time. And uh, so that's a game changer, right? The, the, the price of a Tesla has come down dramatically. The price of these vehicles have been going up dramatically. And so we're at this kind of match made in heaven time for Tesla now where, in my opinion, over this next year, by the end of – by this time next year, I think it's going to be through to most Americans that Tesla is the affordable vehicle and the right financial decision to go get – I think it just is one of those things that takes time. And so that's why I think you haven't really seen the volumes kick up quite yet. I think you will. Um, it's just there's a, there's, a, there's a lag there, okay, between doing all those price cuts and then getting out to the masses and everybody realizing, oh, my gosh, these are so affordable. Why today, if you took out a five-year auto loan and rates have gone from 4% to, let's say, 7.5%, but the, but the price of the Model Y has come down by 20%, the payments are actually lower today than they were a year and a half to two years ago. So True. Now, one last thing uh, in regards to this whole price reduction and everything that's happened there. Do I believe Tesla should lower prices anymore? My opinion is Tesla should not lower prices anymore. I, I think at this point in time, they've done what they've done. It's clearly the three in the wire now, two of the most affordable vehicles to the, the middle class. And I think we can just stay where we're at or potentially even raise price a little bit in 2024. But um, I think we're in a great position. I do not believe we should lower price at all anymore. I think we need to be done with any sorts of price cuts. Just, I, don't, I don't understand the logic of why they have to, to you know, keep cutting the price. And look, I think at the end of the day, they're going to see that they're not getting any demand elasticity despite what they said on the conference call last night. So we think that there might be another couple of price cuts, and we, we may see margins come down a little bit more. But I go back to, I got a stock trading at 52 times next year's earnings, growing at 35% a year, and I can't find stocks that trade at a peg of 1.5 in the growth universe. So uh, to push back against Gary Black here, uh, I love pushing back against uh, my fellow Tesla bulls. We don't know that Tesla's really trading at a 52 uh, times 2024 numbers because we don't really know what margins are looking like in 2024. We, we don't really have a clue right now because we are in the dark on if Tesla's going to do more price cuts, what the demand environment's going to look like. So I just want to push back against that because we, there's no real clarity there right now. It's not – Tesla's not as messy as like a solar edge situation or like the solar stocks right now. But to be quite honest, we don't really know. Uh, we don't really have a clue what Tesla is going to earn next year because we don't know the margins. We're, we're completely in the dark in regards to when the margins bottom and what number that is. Right. But, Gary, you know, th that revenue growth is decelerating, right? The delivery growth is yep. decelerating. And I, I remember listening to you, I think it was on the last call in April after the Q1 uh, earnings report. And I remember, I think you said that you sold a part of your position. You were not happy mm -hmm. with the price yeah. cuts. That was all the way back in April. And if I look at this stock and I look at now the three reactions, the day after it's reported, it's Q1, it's Q2, and it's Q3, it sold off basically 10% each time. So the big money out there is selling on those days. You seem to be very frustrated with his strategy. You seem to not buy the math that he's giving, you know, and, and the CFO, you know, who does all the math, right? Like he left a couple months ago without us, without really a statement or anything like that. So maybe there's some funny math going. And I listened to the same call that you listened to. And I give you a lot of credit. I was reading your Twitter this morning. You were being very honest. That maybe there's some funny math going. Like I said, if you guys got to see what I've seen over the years from Dan Nathan, you would know this man despises Elon Musk and, and really hates Tesla. Like the, gosh, the things he said over the years, holy smokes, man. Are you selling, if you were selling stock after the Q1 call when the stock was $175, are you selling stock here at 220? Because it looks like the fundamentals of this company, at least as it relates to the autos, are deteriorating. And if simple math about price elasticity is not working for this company right now, why are you sticking around waiting for that growth to decelerate further if that's the case, if that's the, and we haven't even had the recession yet, okay? So that's the other point I would make. Yeah, well, we got a couple catalysts ahead. So one, the cyber truck is going to be huge. If you go out and you talk to pickup truck owners, and you got to talk to all of them, you can't just talk to 65-year-olds who drive F-150s. You talk to 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, we go out and we do that. What you find is people love the look of the cyber truck. The cyber truck will be out in about two weeks. It's going to be a rolling billboard, and you're going to see it. And you're going to get excited about it. And you may not buy a pickup truck, but you're going to go to the Tesla website. You say, wow, that's really neat. What is it? I, I can't even imagine the social media buzz that you're going to get when that cyber truck starts rolling all across America. And there's a halo effect.
that will come with that that will ignite the entire franchise. That's one. That's Two, true. They didn't talk about this. I'm not sure why. But there will be at some point an FSD licensing deal with another OEM. It's probably going to be like a Toyota or a Honda. And that's going to get people very excited because there's going to be other FSD, FSD uh, uh, licensing deals. And then the third thing is that the energy business, which has always been very small, is now the highest margin business. It's 24% margins. The auto business is 16. That thing, that thing tripled in the third quarter versus the third quarter a year ago. And people aren't putting any value whatsoever on that. So I think there's a bunch of catalysts ahead. And then the $7,500 IRA credit is going to go to off-invoice January 1st. So I got a lot of catalysts. And you're right. Uh, the volumes have been decelerating. We're going to, we're probably, if they hit 1.8 million for the year, that means that their volume growth for the fourth right. quarter is only going to be 18%. But there. I think they can get back to 30%. Unfortunately, we got to leave it there. We'll have you back, hopefully. Gary Black, a future... So I would have definitely loved that, uh, you know, to have been longer. I would have loved to have them go back and forth for another easily five, ten minutes. I could have listened to them go back and forth. Uh, because by the time, probably another extra ten minutes, they probably would have just been circling the wagons again and again and again. Uh, but bottom line is, you know, margins likely bottom next few quarters. Uh, big question, is it two quarters they bottom or is it four quarters? I think that's the big question, right? Um, I think we're probably closer to bottoming in the next two quarters. That's my personal opinion. I think we got another really sh- tough quarter with margins coming, um, obviously, which will be announced. When will that quarter be announced? The end of Ju- uh, January, beginning of February. And I think the quarter that would be announced in April, that'd be April. Uh, yeah, it should be April. That's going to be another quarter that I think it's going to be really, really tough uh, on margins. After that, I think it, it's open It's open season for potentially our margins that's actually starting to increase. That's just my personal opinion in regards to that. 